Hello everyone, and this is the roster and kind of a minor layout update as I promised about a week ago now. Um, so, I've got a lot of stuff in the past few months. And obviously you can see one of them right in front of us here. This is a scale train to be on the 25th anniversary unit, 5872. I believe this is the second one I saw lead. And I saw it lead two days in a row on a Council Bluffs coal train. But we'll get back to this unit and we'll look at some of the rolling stock I've gotten. So here are the first few items I've gotten in the past couple of months. So these are three HR scale grain cars, as you can tell. This one was I traded actually no, I bought this from Will, he and Sukomaha, for five bucks and just a really pretty car. Um, nice CSX cylindrical hopper. And then after that is a Michigan Farmers Exchange car. And my dad was nice enough to buy this for me. This is an exact rail. The, the CSX, this is an Atlas. This is an ex uh, Actually, no, this is tangent, not exact rail. Um, yeah, or no, maybe this is, I think this is tangent. Yeah, I'm kind of forgetting. But yeah, this is a tangent car. Michigan Elevator Exchange. And it's really pretty. It caught my eye a couple of months ago. And then I waited about another month. And then I bought it. And I love old time grain cars. As you can probably tell by my grain train. But it's got the old car track barcode right here. And also, it's kind of hard to see. But it does have actual moving roller bearings. And this is a very highly detailed car. I'm very pleased with it. Looks nice on my train. Last grain car I got was an Aurora co-op car. And I was just looking around for one of these. And I found one back in October at the Beatrice show. But the guy who was selling it had it way too overpriced at 50 bucks, And I found this one for it was either 10 15 or $20. I forget exactly. But it was a really good price, so I snatched it up quick. And yeah... So now I'll just kind of show off some of the stuff that I got at the Lincoln Train Show, since the Aurora car was from there. So this is um, what my club calls a club car. And this was made, you can see by the number, this was made in 1980. And I don't remember what they said. We talked about it at the last meeting. I believe this is, it might be an exact rail, but I don't remember but this was just a box car, and then they got the decals and everything for it. And this was when it had the old name. Now it's the Lincoln Area Railroad Historical Society, LARHS. But now, well, this was the Lincoln Area Model Railroad Club. Now that's changed because don't really have an actual railroad club. But there are plans to get that going again in the future. Here's the next two cars I bought at the show. I bought these two together, and they're tiny little flower cars, and I think they're really neat. I probably walked past them three times, just doing loops around the the event center, looking at all the different layouts and uh, vendors. And then, I forget, there's something I bought after the show was done. I don't think it was these two. But I bought these two together, five bucks each. This is a Centennial Mills flower car, and then this one over here is at Flower Mills of America. And I actually, a while back for Christmas, I got the Centennial Mills backdrop building, but I screwed the decal up, so it's not gonna say Centennial Mills. I don't really think I'm gonna have any decal on it now. That was part of the reason I bought the Centennial Mills car. And that's a whole different story, why I'm going to be putting a flour mill and eventually a grain elevator in the lamp, but that'll be in another video, once big land update, once I get the yard over there completed. Here's the next car. It's a Nor it's the original Norfolk Southern Railroad, the short line before NS actually became a uh, railroad in a class one. This was the first car I bought, and I believe it was listed for eighteen dollars. And this was right after the show began, and the guy told me he was in a good mood, and so I got it for ten bucks. So, got $8 off of it. It's really nice. I love the color. 
And then also it's got opening doors. Oh. So yeah, it's got opening doors. And yeah. This is another box car I bought at the show. And this is one of Bachman's uh, box cars that have uh, Freds on them. This is the Burlington Northern scheme. And you can see the Fred, Fred flashing with track power on. And just a really cool car. I have three of them now that have those. And I just really like how it looks. I need a little bit more BN stuff. These three are the last three cars that I bought at the show. And my mom and I jointly bought these. We both thought they were really neat. There's some well cars, 48 footers, and BN red one, then two trailer train yellows. And they're really nicely weathered up. But when I got home, I was pretty disappointed because they ran like crap. And I thought that I paid $30 or three shit boxes. And I don't know what I did, but all of a sudden, all three of them just started running perfectly. I don't really even remember what the problem was because I haven't run a stack train for almost a month now. So these ones haven't really got much use yet. But yeah, they run really nice now. No issues at all. There's three cool cars. Okay, I accidentally almost forgot these three. And they look pretty odd because they're trolleys. And the story behind them is that I bought this one because, again, my mom and I, we both thought it, it looked really neat, like the well cars. And so we got that one. And then that, it, that was on the first day of the show. And then when we were driving home, I was telling her, about how I saw these two in a two-pack together. And I realized I really should have bought them. And the first trolley is the exact same as this one. San Francisco uh, Municipal Railway. But the main reason I went back was for this one. This is a really, really pretty Bachman trolley. And I just love this green on it. Now, you might be wondering what I'm going to use these for, because these are all just dummy cars. They don't have any motors in them. But in Fort Collins, they actually have, like, a little kind of historic trolley line. It's called the Fort Collins Municipal Railway. I've been wanting to try and figure out how I could actually incorporate that into my layout, even though where the actual Fort Collins trolley line is, it's off my layout. And so here, I'll quickly show where these guys live. So over there, you can see them. This road right in front, this this one right here, this is College Avenue. And then this one that the trolley is like about to go across, and you can see the semi right there. That's Laporte. I think that's how you pronounce it. Avenue or Drive Avenue. So, um... It's nestled back in there, and of course, that's not actually where they run. But that was just some free real estate that I had open, and yeah, I just think it looks nice. And, of course, that green trolley is not actually the Fort Collins Municipal Railway one, but I just thought it would look pretty cool. And that's where the tracks start, and then they end behind the fire station. I'm not really using it as a fire station. Alright, here's one more thing I almost forgot to show. Bought this at the train show for five dollars, and I believe it's a Tyco or something like that. I don't think Bachman. I'm pretty sure it's Tyco, and it's a Santa Fe coal car. I've been looking for a Santa Fe coal car because I've made myself a tie train that's about five cars long right now, and I need to get another just so I could have a satisfyingly good length to it. And this is what I found. Um. Currently, I'm out. I'm totally out of metal wheels and metal couplers. So once I have the money, I'll have to go to Randy's and get that, and then this can actually be a part of it. Something I really like on these, I have a CB and Q one that's like this, but the actual cold coal doors open, which is really pretty neat. You can see through there. So yeah, probably have to glue those shut. Unfortunately, when I actually have it as the tie train, just because if these do open. They touch the rail. Actually, no, they don't. 
but you don't really want them swinging open while you're moving. All right, we're getting close to the end of the new rolling stock that I've got. So just hang on for a second. These are three Santa Fe passenger cars I bought from University of Omaha and got these for five dollars as well. And they're yeah, they're Santa Fe passenger cars. There's a coach, a uh, dome car, and an observation car. And I bought these so I could run a geo train. All right, so here's the first of a few new units. This is another one from Union Pacific Omaha, and him and I traded my UPSD 78s for his BNSF-9. And the little white thing on the front, I made it custom. I made it just say no lead past Denver, and the reason I did that was because I... So, the ditch light on the conductor side, right, that one, <clears throat> it's very strange. For some reason on my layout, it didn't happen on his, but on my layout, it, like, sometimes it'll work and sometimes it doesn't. And so then I was just gonna use that and make it look like it was damaged. Like, not do actual damage to it, make it look like it hit something. And so that's why it says no lead past Denver. And I thought I kind of looked goofy with that, and so I took all the stuff off, but... I can't really take the sign off because that's glued on, but that's fine. It just kind of looks unique on there. Here's the next unit. This is an Oakway SD60 Leaser that BN had in their later years, and then eventually BNSF had them just for a little bit. And this was quite the spare of the moment decision. I walked into Randy's one day just to look around like I do sometimes and talk. And I saw these on the shelf, and I realized I had enough money for it, and this is DCC and sound. I had enough money for it, and so I came back the next day and bought this. And this number is 9089. And it's a really neat model. Um, it's Athern, or It's a ready-to-roll model. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's Athern. I forget, though. Yeah, it's definitely Athern. So, yeah, and it's really nice. One of the things I really like is the beacon on top actually looks like it spins. So yeah. Here's the final one that I'll be looking at. This is the latest Scale Trains locomotive that's been released. This is one of the 10 25th anniversary unit AC40... Alright, this is the third and last unit that I'll be going over in this video. And this is the Scale Trains BNSF 25th Anniversary Unit, and it's an ES44AC, DCC and Sound, and I just picked it up yesterday on April 20, or not 23rd, 12th, and I have been saving gift certificates and everything for the past few years to get one of these, and I finally have, and I would say it was worth the wait of about a year and a half, and I'll get up close to this unit. Alright, so here we're looking at it down below. And it is very pretty. It's very nicely made. This is my first rivet counter locomotive I've got from Scale Trains. It's only my second Scale Trains unit I've ever had. And like I said in the beginning of the video, this is 5872. This is the second one I've seen lead. And I saw this two days back to back. So that's why I got it, and that's why it was special to me. And I had this pre-ordered since they first announced them in late 2020. And you can see all of the previous railroads, except the Denver Road. There's CB and Q, Great Northern, Northern Pacific, then BN and Santa Fe right in the middle, of course. And then you got the Frisco, the Colorado and Southern, and the Spokane, Seattle, or Seattle. Uh, Spokane, Portland, and Seattle, sorry. I always know that, but I don't know why I just struggle with that. And then, on the engineer side, you can see the 25th anniversary decal. And, back to the front, has the 25th anniversary decal on the front as well. Very, very nice ditch lights and headlights. The light color looks very nice in my opinion and also the number boards actually light up too so I just 
think this is a great model, and I would definitely recommend it to anybody who's contemplating purchasing it, although I think basically all of them are sold out by now. Um, underbody detail is really good. Per scale trains, rivet counters, roller bearings do move, which is really nice. You got the ES44AC printed on the side. Now, I'm not going to go through it all because there's actual reviews on it on YouTube of different models. And this one in real life has a K3LA, but for some reason Scale Trains doesn't have a K3LA on this one's decoder. And so it had I have some weird horn on it. It's like a K3LA RB4 or something. I kind of forget what it said on the manual, but I'm sure somebody knows out there. So yeah, I'll just do a quick start up and a little sound demonstration of this one, and I'll be at the end of this video.